Congratulations on your purchase of your brand new K270E or K370E battery electric medium duty truck. We've actually been building the diesel version of this truck in North America for nearly two decades. And much of the operation is really the same, but there are some key differences with the electric powertrain. And I'm gonna walk through those with you right now. But first, we gotta get this truck charged up and that's a really big difference. So let's go take care of that now. For as long as we've been selling diesel trucks, we haven't really had to ask our customers how they're gonna fuel their truck. Well, that's all changed with the introduction of battery electric trucks. Most of our customers are actually owning their own infrastructure and the operations of those chargers and keeping these trucks charged is really key to making your operation run smoothly. These trucks are equipped with a CCS type one charging port and that's the standard for heavy duty trucks in North America. You can spec that charging plug back of cab as seen here or end of frame on the K270E and K370E. The K series is capable of charging via an AC charger up to 19.2 kilowatts or DC fast charger. The charger rate of the fast charging is dependent on the battery size. Our 100 mile pack charges at a max rate of 75 kilowatts while our 150 mile and 200 mile packs charge at a rate of 150 kilowatts. For rough calculations on charge times, you can simply divide the battery pack size in kilowatt hours by the charge rate in kilowatts. The charge rate can fluctuate based on environmental conditions and charger compatibility, but typically the charging speed will be whatever is slower of the charger output and the vehicle input. In this case, our charger is rated to 180 kilowatts, but the truck's max charge rate is 75 kilowatts, so that's the fastest rate allowable. With a total pack size of 141 kilowatt hours and a charge rate of 75 kilowatts, this truck will take roughly two hours to charge. If you have just ended operation, it's a good idea to give the truck a couple minutes after shutting down. Keep the truck off and when ready, plug into the charging cord. Make sure the cord is free of obstruction and isn't pulled too taut. The light inside the charging port will blink white indicating the system is ready. When the charging successfully begins, it'll begin to blink green. When completely charged, the light will be solid green. If there is a charging error, the light will blink red. In the event of a charging error, Disconnect the charger. Often there is a release button on the charger itself. After the charge is disconnected, wait about 30 seconds and flip the 12 volt disconnect to the off position. After one minute, flip the 12 volt disconnect back to the on position and reconnect the charger. When charging, the B panel display in the cab will indicate that the truck is charging and display the percent state of charge and time remaining to 100%. When first plugging the charger into the vehicle, your charge rate will start slow and gradually climb to the peak rate over the course of a couple minutes. You should see the peak charge rate sustained until about the last 10% of charging. At this time, the charge rate will decrease to about seven kilowatts. This is helping balance the battery cells so they all achieve full state of charge. This is a key practice for the truck to perform its full driving range. If some battery cells are charged lower than others, you will only be able to drive as far as the lowest charge cells. It's best to allow this balancing process to happen regularly. If you are charging overnight, this should be easy to accomplish daily. Before starting your truck, it's always important to complete a pre-trip inspection and ensure your truck is running properly. It's always best to comply with the local, state, and federal laws, so please consult the regulation in your area before hitting the road. Check for low hanging cables below the truck, especially orange high voltage cables. Have an authorized technician examine any questionable components and repair them without delay. Check the parking spot for evidence of any fluids leaking. Verify the truck exterior lights are all functioning. Ensure all windows, mirrors, and lights are clean and unobstructed. Verify the coolant lines, power steering lines, Airlines, fittings, and other connections are all secure, intact, and free of chafing. Verify that all coolant reservoirs are in the correct location and adequately filled. Ensure the radiator fan is free of debris. Remove the charger plug if necessary. Inspect 12 volt disconnect switch and ensure it is in the on position before starting.
Turn the ignition key fully clockwise and let it spring back. Ensure the retarder switch is in the on position unless inclement driving conditions exist to maximize truck range. Release the park brake. Put the truck in drive. The truck will be ready to move when the green ready to move telltale is illuminated. I'm here with Don. He's helping us demonstrate the driving of the K270E after we showed you everything on the pre-trip inspection. So Don's gonna take off and show us what this electric truck can do around the track. Ready? Yep, let's go. So as you can see, this truck has a pretty quick takeoff with that electric motor. And we're in the class six version. That's got a Dana Sumo TM4 motor. If you upgrade to the class seven version of this truck, you get a Dana Sumo TM4 HD variant with nearly 500 horsepower. The next thing you'll notice as we're going around this track is it's incredibly quiet in this cab. And it's all because of this electric motor. It sounds more like a golf cart than 30 foot box truck. That's something to keep in mind as you're driving around in crowded areas around pedestrians. This truck can definitely sneak up on some people. So be careful, that's something that we tell people to get used to when they're operating an electric vehicle. We're reaching speeds up to 65 miles an hour here, but as soon as you take your foot off that accelerator, you'll notice that regen braking kicks in. And what's happening there is that the motor actually runs in reverse and so, it, that slows you down instead of your service brakes, extending brake life and adding energy into your battery packs at the same time. And you can see that took us all the way down from freeway speeds all the way to a crawl. So very powerful braking and definitely an advantage of having this electric drivetrain. Something to be aware of for the regen braking is that when you have your truck fully charged, those regen brakes will be disabled and you will see a light up icon on the dash showing that it's disabled. And that's because there's nowhere for that excess energy to be stored in the battery packs. So something to be aware of, you will notice that right after you take your truck off the charger if it's fully charged. Obviously, the electric powertrain is a big change for the K-Series, but overall, we kept the look and feel of this truck very familiar. The dash is really where the electrification is reflected inside the cab. As you look at the dash A panel, you'll notice the fuel gauge is replaced with the charge level gauge. The RPM gauge is replaced with a power output gauge. A neat feature of this is that you can see both the power output as you use the motor, as well as the power input as the regen braking recharges the batteries. On the B panel display, you get useful information like range estimates and auxiliary power draw. The screen also shows when the truck is charging and ready to drive. HVAC controls are located next to the B panel screen on the dash. The snowflake button turns on the air conditioning while turning the lowest knob controls the airflow. The left side recirculates while the right side allows fresh air. The middle knob controls the temperature setting. To activate the heater, the cabin heater button above the B-panel display must first be pressed on. An orange light will indicate it is active. If the cabin heater button is not on, the temperature will not increase. If parking overnight and not plugged into a charger, be sure to flip the 12-volt disconnect to preserve charge in the low-voltage system. 